Hi! Hello! I have just gotten back from work and before I lose all daylight I just wanted to film a quick little May check-in because somehow it is June already and I am not ready for it. <laughs> And I just wanted to check in with you guys about how it is my May went and how it feels to have gone five months without shopping and paying down my student loan debt. Can I just say that my like hair is currently at the stage where I am like really not happy with the way that it looks because it's no longer like short enough for me to style effortlessly like all of the short hair styling products like pomades and all that kind of stuff don't work on my hair anymore it's too long for that but it's also not long enough to put up the fact that my hair is just at the right length that it sits perfectly against my neck i hate it here also side note the fact that it was 95 degrees on the first day of june is honestly like homophobic filing a hate crime against climate change anyway without any further ado let's get it caveat to say that these are my favorite earrings of all time. They're by this British company called Wolf and Moon and they're these beautiful upside down tulips. Every single time I wear these earrings I get a compliment and honestly they deserve it. They're so beautiful and Wolf and Moon also had this like stunning statement tulip necklace that I almost bought in a fit of madness but it was like $200 and I was like Prachi when are you gonna wear it? Never. So just buy the damn earrings and be contented with yourself. I don't know if y'all can hear the ruckus outside but city living y'all. Every single earring I have ever bought from Wolf and Moon has honestly been a straight up banger and I have bought them from multiple people as presents because they're like handcrafted and artisan and Hi, it is the next day because my neighbors were having like some sort of a block party and you could absolutely hear their music through all of my like windows and stuff and I have zero desire to get like a copyright claim or strike on my channel. So new day, new outfit, new nail polish, new makeup looks, new earrings too. Even though ironically these ones are also still by Wolf and Moon, they have like a literal actual moon and like a sun. Literally sponsor me my dudes, sponsor me. But let's actually get into what this video is about, which is the May check-in of my no buy year. I got sick towards like the middle of May, which was kind of weird because I also got sick towards the start of April. And I had a very like similar set of symptoms like both times around. It was a lot of like coughing, congestion, sneezing, like aches and pains. But both times I was negative for the Rona. So I don't know what the hell virus is like making the rounds in Baltimore, but uh, it kicked my ass twice in the past two months, which was not very fun. So in terms of my channel, there was like almost like a 10 day period where I had a really hard time filming because I didn't have a voice. But I did at the tail end of my illness manage to film like a book review of Lemon by Kwon Yo Sun, which if you haven't watched, I'm going to link that up in the cards. And then a couple days after that, I actually filmed a video of my pen and ink collection. I was still feeling kind of sick and miserable on the day that I filmed that video So that's actually a video that like doesn't feature my face It's like an overhead style video and I'm currently like in the middle of editing it I was like about to post that video and then I realized like holy shit We are in June and I should film my like May check-in I also have begun filming like my makeup collection so far I've broken it down into four different categories like eyes lips cheeks face and I'm like slowly sorting all of my makeup into those categories and trying to film one video at a time. I just wanted to flag that throughout June you're probably going to be seeing a bunch of makeup collection videos and the interesting thing for me to talk about in this check-in right now is as I've been kind of like sitting down and looking over my makeup collection I've just kind of been hit with the realization that huge chunks of my makeup collection like aren't being used right now like at all. Like my makeup look today has no foundation, no powder, no highlighter, no bronzer. I put seven things on my face. Seven things made up my entire face today and like not a single one of them is foundation or powder, right? I used a spot concealer from NARS to literally hide two really like active red pimples that I have. My blush and my lip color are the same product from e.l.f which I just added like a clear lip gloss or MAC on top of. And then eye makeup was something that I literally only did because I'm filming a video today. Because usually when I go into work, I'm wearing my glasses. And when I wear glasses, I tend not to bother with eye makeup at all. I tend to just throw on some sort of a lip product and call it a day. And so today, special for you guys, just because I'm filming, I used a brow pencil, a pencil eyeliner, a mascara, and then I threw on this one ColourPop Super Shock Shadow in Reflection. 
this what I have today is my dressed up makeup this is the most makeup I have been putting on and so I realized that like where I am right now there is a huge gap between the amount of makeup I actually use on a daily basis and the amount of makeup I own especially as I'm sitting down and categorizing like all of my base products I'm just kind of struck with like how it's been weeks and even months since I've used a lot of this makeup and a part of me is curious to know like is this just a phase like am I going to go back into the swing of things and be doing more complicated eye looks and using base makeup and stuff on a more regular basis and not just for like a special event like my sister got engaged and she's having a party or does this represent a more permanent shift in my own makeup preferences and aesthetics and so I'm kind of curious like do you guys find that your makeup tastes have like really really changed over the past year or so because for me personally I can actually like pinpoint the exact moment that my preferences around makeup changed and it was March of 2022 when I started wearing masks that was the moment for me where I basically stopped wearing a lot of base makeup. Because for the longest time after March of 2020, I was having only two types of interactions. So one was an in-person masked interaction where it didn't make sense to wear base makeup because I would dirty masks, which were in short supply. And for those interactions, pretty much the only thing that anybody could see of my face were my eyes. So I would often wear like really pretty sparkly eye makeup and nothing else or I was having virtual interactions with people via Zoom, where usually the camera quality is so shit that it fakes me having perfect skin with no need for base makeup. And furthermore, the shit camera quality, plus the fact that usually I'm wearing glasses, meant that like you couldn't see anything that was going on in my eyes. So then I didn't even wear eye makeup. The only thing that I would wear was some sort of a bold lipstick color. And so like a couple interesting side effects of that is like, I completely ignored base makeup for a really long time. Not just foundation, but also like bronzer, blush, highlight, etc. And secondarily, for a really long time, I wasn't like putting together coherent makeup looks anymore. I was just focusing on one feature of my face to highlight. It was either just putting on eye makeup and then the whole rest of my face was blank, or it was just putting on a lipstick and everything else was blank. And I think I did that for so long that now here in 2022, I'm like finding the habit really hard to break. And I know that might be like kind of difficult for you guys to believe because one of the few times I do put together a coherent makeup look is when I'm filming, right? So as far as you guys know, the vast majority of the time, I look as though I have put together like an entire look. But like if you watched my last video where I was sick and giving you like very, very low effort makeup, that is actually how I tend to look on most days where there is like nothing on my face except for one really, really bright lipstick. Once I started working in October, I almost abandoned eyeshadow entirely. And my entire work wardrobe kind of revolved around lip product, blush, spot concealer, mascara. Like that is what I wear to work every single day. And I'm just kind of curious to know, like, is this a permanent thing? Is this how I'm operating now? Should I actually be going through my makeup collection and maybe doing like a pretty rigorous declutter to reflect the potential new reality of my makeup preferences? Or is this just like a phase? You know, am I gonna like really regret it if I do like a pretty intense declutter now? And that's kind of why I'm curious to find out like what have your experiences with makeup been like for like the past couple of years? Do you find that you've really changed the way that you apply makeup? And beyond the last couple of years, more generally, do you find that you go through these sort of like cycles of things that you're obsessed with, like looks that you're obsessed with creating maybe. How do you sort of manage your makeup collection when you go through these phases? Do you find that you like have a strong preference for a certain type of product, but eventually over time you sort of fall back and rediscover parts of your makeup collection that you've been neglecting for a while? And it's not like I'm a person who receives PR or anything, right? It's not like my makeup collection seems huge and unused because companies are sending me a bunch of shit that I just have on hand. It's like every single thing in my my collection I bought or I chose when like a friend was decluttering or something with a lot of like thought in mind and so I'm having like a weird set of feelings around whether or not I want to let that stuff go because I also have definitely impulsively just decluttered a bunch of shit in the past and then like a month later been like what was I thinking you know like why did I do that because now I like miss a bunch of that stuff and I want it back and then I end up having to like go out and rebuy it which is 
like fiscally very irresponsible of me. So yeah, like that's just kind of what's been sort of bubbling around in my head for the last month or two. I've just I've really been reflecting on how it is that my makeup preferences have changed over the past year or two, and how the changes in how I like to use makeup are actually not really well reflected in my actual makeup collection. And I just I don't know where to sit with that. But yeah, so in terms of my actual makeup no buy, because this has been a subject that I've been thinking about a lot, I haven't really felt the desire to buy a lot of makeup. Just what I own already feels very, very overwhelming and underused. I think that's kind of like put my desire to keep buying new makeup into perspective because I'm like, bitch you're not even using what you own like what are you talking about like you want more makeup half the things you own haven't even been used in like six plus months what are you doing prachi so it's definitely like it's made the no buy process a lot easier the other thing that's kind of been making my no buy process a lot smoother and easier to adhere to is just being busy those of you who've been around in my channel for a while you know that i was on a makeup no buy in 2019 and that was a lot harder of a no buy for me than this current one is in large part because at that particular point in time makeup skincare beauty etc it was like the only hobby i had choosing not to buy makeup or skincare was really really hard to do because it felt like i had nothing else to occupy my time and that's just not true of where i am in 2022 because me personally i just find like that the challenges that work is providing me with have been so effective at occupying my headspace and my mind even outside of work that I just like I don't even have time to figure out like what new things are on the market that I would want to buy. Like I realized that I have somehow gone from being the first person to know what new makeup is out there to being like one of the last people still interested in beauty who knows what new makeup is out there and I've kind of made my peace with that. I'm okay with that because I don't work in the beauty industry. It is not my job to know what the newest makeup is out there. It is not my job to professionally review makeup. Like this is not the career path that I have chosen for myself. Like this, by which I mean like makeup, beauty, all that kind of stuff, as well as the YouTube channel, honestly, this is like a fun little thing I like to do on the side. And as such, it's like, okay, if I'm a little bit behind on it. Right, because like there's this like mistaken idea that some people have that if you are engaging in something as a hobby, like you have to be really, really good at it. Right, that if you're going to paint as a hobby, then it had better be because you're like Vincent fucking Van Gogh. And it's like, no, Vincent Van Gogh was an actual artist. Like that was his literal job. You can be a terrible painter, but still find joy and stress relief and fun in the activity and engage in it. And when you do that, your level of engagement with painting doesn't have to be as like high or intense or serious as someone who is a literal professional painter. You know, I don't know if I'm making any sense, but that's just like the way that I've started to think about it, which is like, I don't need to experience every single piece of makeup out there. That is not my job. Because when it comes to work right now, like there have been two major developments over the past month that have been taking up a lot of my time. So one is that I got added to a project where we are working with like the Latino community in Baltimore. And I'm one of like two Spanish speakers on that team, which means that there's an expectation placed on me that I will be able to engage with the Latino community that we are working with in their native language of Spanish. And the thing is, Spanish is not my first language. It's not even my second language. It's my fucking fifth language. And while I have, I think like probably like an intermediate level of fluency in it, because I literally studied Latin American studies in school and um, Spanish language fluency to like an intermediate level was required for me to graduate. There's a big difference between like getting an A in 300 level Spanish and being able to have like fluent, fluid conversations with native speakers, all of whom have their own like accents and slang and all this kind of stuff. And so in order to not let my team down, every single day after work, I've been spending like an hour or an hour and a half trying to like refresh my Spanish and also to like learn a bunch of new words that I did know before that are related to like vaccination and COVID and a bunch of like medical and public health stuff because like I know like normal average person Spanish I don't know a bunch of highly technical terms in Spanish that I will need to know in order to have these conversations and so it's like when I get out of work I don't have time to be looking up like what the newest Pat McGrath release is I need to be like refreshing my Spanish so that I don't embarrass myself in front of these native speakers and the rest of my team 
On top of that, on another one of the work projects that I'm on, and this is really exciting news, they are thinking of sending me to Kenya in the back half of July. I would be part of like a team of people interviewing these really like high level policy makers in like the Kenyan Ministry of Health. And that is like a huge trip to engage in. It's a huge trip to plan. It's like a really intimidating thing that I feel like super unprepared for. And so once again, like outside of work, like I've been taking a lot of time and energy, like reading about how are these interviews conducted? How can I make sure that like I have the requisite skills to do this? And then on top of that, I personally like don't feel comfortable traveling to places where I put like zero effort to learn the language at all. So in addition to Spanish, I'm also trying to spend like at least 30 minutes every day learning just really like basic Kiswahili. And so it's like the things that I'm doing for work are like really exciting, but they're also really intimidating. They're tasks that require me to actually like stretch myself and become a better researcher, a better person, um, a more like informed and well-rounded human being. And so I'm really, really excited. And every day I wake up and I'm like, oh my God, I can't believe like this is my job. These are the opportunities that I have. I'm like so grateful, but I'm also like really, really busy. And every single day when I like clock out of work and I come home, I have to like make a conscious effort to be like, Prachi, like do not veg out in front of YouTube. Learn some Spanish or some Kiswahili or like read the book on qualitative research methods that you've been trying to get done. Do something because for the first time in my life, I am working on teams where it is like a group project where everyone actually does what they're supposed to do, right? That's never happened to me in all of the group projects I've ever worked on in high school, in every single group project I've ever worked on in university. There has always been at least one bum who has like done nothing and who like we've all had to scramble to like pull their weight. And at Johns Hopkins for like the first time in my life with the teams that I'm on, like everyone is on their fucking A game, like everyone is pulling their weight. Everyone does what they said they were going to do at the exact time that they said they were going to do it. And while I love that, I'm like so impressed by how functional all of the teams that I'm on are, it also puts this like added pressure on me to make sure that I'm not the bitch that's like letting the team down, you know? Like I don't wanna be the person who I used to hate in every single group project. It's been like a really refreshing experience working on these kinds of teams. And it's also just pushed me to be like a much better person. But the reason why I'm bringing it all up in the context of my no buy is just like, I have not had the time to really like think a lot about buying makeup and skincare. And then the few times I have even thought about it or engaged with like my makeup collection, like sorting it to try and film these videos and stuff, I've then become acutely aware of the fact that like, I am not using huge chunks of my makeup collection. And so for me to still persist in wanting to buy things is dumb. Does not to say that the desire to not buy things doesn't exist because dude, like earlier today, I saw the like Pat McGrath blush duos that came out and there's one that's like this like bronzy terracotta-y color. I'm gonna see if I can post a picture of it up here that my like monkey brain immediately was like, Prachi, you need this. And then I had to kind of pull myself back and be like, monkey brain if you don't shut the hell up like do you know how much blush i own do you know how little of it i am using right now like please <laughs> so that was that segment of the video where i like talk about my month and the lessons learned and everything let's do a really really brief sort of run through of my student loan debt situation so the refresher course of my student loan debt journey is i started off this year with thirty three thousand two hundred and seventy one dollars and forty cents in student loan debt. My plan was to pay $24,000 of my student loans off by the end of this year. So on average, that's $2,000 every single month. Sometimes I pay more than $2,000 a month, sometimes I pay less than $2,000 a month, but as long as by the end of 2022, I have paid off $24,000 of my student loan debt, I will consider my goal to have been successful. Now, at the start of May, my starting amount of debt was $26,010 and 12 cents. Over the course of May, I have paid $2,738.72. So there was a $2,000 flat payment that I made the moment I got my tax refund. There was a $281.91 payment that gets automatically debited out every single month. That is the minimum student loan payment that I should be making. And then on top of that, I made an additional payment of $456,000.81. And as a result of all of those payments that I made throughout the month of May, my final final debt amount at this current point in time is $23,271.40. 
That means that the total money that I have paid so far this year towards my student loan debt is exactly $10,000. $10,000 over the span of five months means that I have been hitting my on average goal of $2,000 every single month. I was hoping throughout like June and July to be able to do sort of like aggressive student loan payments, like at least 2200 every single month. But unfortunately, because of like the upcoming Kenya trip, um, I have to pay for everything out of pocket and then I have to get reimbursed. So I have to make sure that I have enough like money floating around in my bank account to be able to pay everything out of pocket first and then I'll get reimbursed. So we will see how June and July work out in terms of like debt for me but as of right now I am still very much so on track to pay $24,000 of my student loan debt by the end of the year and that is everything folks thank you so so much for watching and I hope you have an amazing upcoming week and even if the rest of your week is messy and imperfect I hope that you're still able to create and experience some truly beautiful moments thanks for watching bye